Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a great day. God is good and worthy to be praised. First of all, I want to thank all of you who communicated with me concerning my birthday. Thank you so much for the kind communications, the generous gifts, the, the wishes of love, the numerous texts, all of the things that you did to make this preacher feel uh, quite special. You know, if you live to see your birthday, whether you get a birthday wish or a birthday card or not, you win just by showing up. And God has blessed me to have uh, to be on this planet for 61 years. And I thank God for every day. He blessed us to come through the, uh, the pandemic and we're strong in Jesus and moving forward. And I tell you, I'm excited about the things of God and I'm excited about being here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I've been out for quite a few Thursdays, but tonight I'm in the saddle. Now, having said all that, I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. And you know what? I, Brother Gary, I don't particularly like having to do this, but I don't mind. I think that there must be something in the air, in the spirit, in the water, or somewhere, something's going on in the state of Georgia. Now, uh, we just finished talking to you about the erroneous uh, doctrine from uh, Creflo Dollar with regards to tithe, and he spoke with the authority of God as though tithing is not for today. It's wrong. It's Old Testament. It's the law. And we've addressed that. But my friends, I didn't think it could get worse, but I was wrong. I was as wrong as Creflo is about tithe now. I didn't think a preacher uh, uh, could say anything worse, and uh, Jamal Bryant proved me wrong. Now, uh, as with uh, Brother Dollar, uh, I, the same holds true with Brother Bryant. I have nothing personal no personal attacks to wage uh, at this this man. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I, I like him. I I met him. I, he has he has ministered here before, although it was years ago, and uh, I enjoyed him. Uh, and so I have no personal animus. But for a preacher of the gospel to stand in the pulpit of his church, and by the way, the name of the church is New Birth. Now, don't you think it's something a little odd that at new birth, a preacher would stand in the pulpit of new birth and bemoan the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which only will result in more babies actually being born. I wish the lie that was being told to people about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I wish that it wasn't a lie. I wish that it did actually outlaw all abortions. I wish that some of the things that they're saying uh, will uh, no longer be allowed wouldn't. The truth is, it's sent back to each state where the states will decide. But for a preacher to stand in the pulpit and to bemoan a law that uh, since 1973 has been responsible for over 60 million plus deaths, 60 million Americans who would be here otherwise aren't here just due to the, to the Supreme Court passing Roe uh, v. Wade into law. 20 million plus black babies, uh, of which uh, they were, uh, uh, at least half of them were female, uh, 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 missing as well. So at new birth, on a Sunday morning, at new birth, you get it? New birth, the pastor of new birth, um, uh, is uh, 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 speaking against the overturning of Roe v. Wade. He said in his talk that uh, uh, the you know the infant mortality rate for black babies are going to go up thirty percent. The infant mortality rate. Okay, well that remains to be seen. But here's what we do know, Pastor and members of New Birth who applauded his statements. 
uh, the uh, mortality rate of aborted babies is 100%. Every abortion, uh, every successful abortion means that a child dies. Every successful abortion is the killing of a human being. Now, uh, I'm going to move as fast on this as I can, but let's have some A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, teaching. Look at this, abortion. The definition to abortion is the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy most often performed during the first 28 weeks of pregnancy. Abortion, a procedure to end pregnancy. It uses me medicine or surgery to remove the embryo or the fetus and placenta from the uterus. Abortion, it is the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy. Abortion. All right, let me set this down and let me get my next little card here because, you know, we need to talk to you about it. Now, the next card here says reproduction. 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 The process of producing offspring that are biologically or genetically similar to the parent organism. Reproduction. Procreation or breeding is the biological process by which new individual organisms, offspring, are produced from their parent or parents. Reproduction is a fundamental feature of all life. Reproduction, reproduction, right? Reproduction, abortion. Now, do you, given these uh, examples, these words, these definitions that I've just given you, do you see any of this in this? Is there any reproduction in abortion? Do you see where abortion produces reproduction? No, there's no abortion in reproduction. There's, when there's reproduction, there's not abortion. So when they call it women's reproductive rights, they're lying to you, and they're calling you stupid. And if you fall for it, you are. They, they, they have to use labels because the truth doesn't work with these people. The truth is an abortion is the deliberate termination of a reproduction. Reproduction. There is no abortion in reproduction, and if if reproduction is the process of an off process of producing an offspring that are bi like biologically or genetically similar to a parent, is dealing with uh, 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 pregnancies, and abortion is the termination of a pregnancy. Then, Gary, I, I, I guess next we need to, you know, we're doing the ABC. We're going back to school. Talk about what a pregnancy is. Pregnancy. See, we'll get, we're, we're producing it for you today so you will know what terms mean because words still have meaning. Pregnancy is the time during which one or more offspring develops, gestates, or develops, they gestate inside a woman's womb. Pregnancy. So how can, if this is the definition of pregnancy, and it is, and if this is the definition of reproduction, and it is, and if this is the definition of abortion, and it is, how then can abortion be called reproductive rights? It can't. They can't. You know what? These people have to lie. If they tell you the truth and they, and they speak of it for what it is, it won't sell. And, the, and, the, and people will go the other way, and they know it. Now, uh, I want to move right along. Huh. He says at new birth on a Sunday morning, the name of the church is new birth. He says at new birth, if if America was truly pro-life, America would get rid of the death penalty. Now, I don't know if uh, the pastor is aware of it or not, but mm, uh, we get the death penalty from God. <laughs> so. 
you know, Genesis chapter number nine, and uh, uh, and and uh, if you look at verse one, it says, "And God blessed Noah." If you look at the second clause in verse one, it says, "And God said unto them." So the person who's doing the talking in Genesis chapter number nine is God, and God says this in verse three: "Every moving thing." As a matter of fact, the blessing that he gave them, which has nothing to do with abortion, he said the blessings of fecundity. He said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. So much for abortion. All right? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth is what God said. Verse 3, every moving thing that liveth, every animal shall be meat for you. Every animal shall be food for humans to eat. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. I've given you, uh, uh, now he's given them flesh, which was, which was different originally. He gave only the green herb. Now he's saying you can have beef and flesh uh, to eat uh, along with, you know, you got your meats and your vegetables and the fruit and all that. So he says you can have these things to eat. He says, but flesh with, with the life thereof. But flesh, verse 4, but flesh with the life thereof, which is, is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. You know why? Because life belongs to God. And he did not want them to eat bloody meat. Meat with the blood in it, God says, uh, don't eat it. You got to cook that out of it. All right? Now, he says, surely... Your blood, look at this, surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it and at the hand of every man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Notice, God treats the death of an animal differently than he does the death of a human being. He says here you can kill animals for food. But if you kill a man or if an animal kills a man, then God says, I will require the death of that man or that animal who, who kills or murders a man. And it says this in verse 6. Whosoever shed man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in, for in the image of God made he him. God made he man. God made the human race. And he gave life such dignity that he said that if you murder a man, if you kill, if you unlawfully kill a man, here's a death penalty, your Life will be taken. Now, now, listen, we want some justice in the application of the death penalty. You want the person to be guilty, of course. You don't want them to be framed. The evidence ought to be there. But to, to say if America was just truly pro-life, America would get rid of the death penalty. You can't say that. The Bible says in the, uh, 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 Exodus chapter number 20 and verse 13, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not aratsha. Aratsha, a Hebrew word which means to murder. It, it's, it's manslaughter. It is the unlawful, unauthorized killing of a human being. But there are cases where uh, the killing of human beings are authorized and are lawful. So you can't say if America was truly pro-life, it would just do away with the... Uh, death penalty, and I, I failed to see what one has to do with the other, and I would, I really wish some of the, these guys would, would go a little further than Democrat Party talking points. One of the talking points he uses is, he says, you know, uh, this is uh, declaring war on 32 million women. How is overturning uh, Roe v. Wade declaring war on anybody? I think the overturning of Roe v. Wade uh, ended the war that's been declared on the on the children in the womb. And uh, uh, um, he says he's following uh, the mother of the movement, Maxine Waters. Hey, man, I say to every preacher, follow God. Follow God. Don't join in with anybody whose position is opposite that 
of the God of the Bibles. He said, even says that mothers have the right to elect where they are in the, in the season and in the stages of their lives and should not be criminalized. Be careful with these words, salads, how people throw in seasons, stages. This is a fancy way of saying why. And, and by the way, he made this statement while he was calling for women to bring their babies up to be christened. You got to be a stupid mother. You can't be thinking to bring your, your child up to be christened by a man who just endorsed abortion. You think those hands are sanctified? You think that the, the blessings that is pronounced over the child, God's going to hear it from a man? You think he even really means it? Who just, who just finished making a passionate argument for abortion and bemoaning the overturning of Roe v. Wade? Come on, mother. Uh, you can get your baby uh, christened somewhere else. Do it yourself. But uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want a, a preacher who is pro-choice <laughs> to christen my child. Come on. You can't make this stuff up, Brother Garrett. And so, uh, but he says, mothers have the right to elect where they are in these seasons. Well, you do. You do until you get pregnant. You do. You know, th these guys treat pregnancy like it's COVID or some condition out there that people just get it. You know, you just inhale and you're pregnant. No, no. No, there are actions that are taken, uh, uh, sexual actions that are taken, things that you're participating in that you shouldn't be, uh, that, that, that leads to the pregnancy. And I know I'm running a little long here, and I, I'll, I'll go into it with a little more detail, but I just got to share this with you. Gary, do I have time to share this? Yeah, I just got to share this with you. Now, the, the argument that a woman has the right to do what she wants with her own body. And you can hear some of the women in the audience, yeah, praise God, preach, you tell them. Sha -ya 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 -ya. Speaking in tongues and everything, probably. But listen, uh, ladies, ladies, ladies out there who are watching, now you know I love you. You know I love you. And I thank God for you. But you alone, women and men, uh, you gotta tell, you gotta make sure that you walk according to the scriptures with regards to what you can and cannot do with your own body because the Bible has something to say about what you can and cannot do with your own body. Why is that at Bishop Wood? I knew you were going to ask. First Corinthians chapter number six. Uh, and uh, we'll start reading right quick at verse 12. Paul gives the, the motto of the city of Corinth. And I'll talk about this a little uh, uh, at length tonight. Corinth was a wicked city, and the motto of Corinth was all things are lawful. Basically, do what you want to do. So Paul uh, uh, quotes that motto, and he also does it in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 23. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. That is, I can do what I want, but it's not necessarily helpful. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power. That is, I will not be brought under the control of any. I will not allow my mind to follow this freedom to make me think I can do whatever I want to do. I can put whatever I want in my body. I can give my body to whomever I decide to give it to so forth and so on. And, and just in case my body gets pregnant, ladies, and, and there's another human being in there, then, um, uh, I have a right to terminate that life. Now the Bible says this, Watch this. It says, meats are for the belly. This, the stomach is made to receive food. And the stomach is for meats. But God shall destroy both of them in time the human body is going to die. Now, now he goes to the entire body. Because what he does is, I think it's a stroke of genius. He mentions some things it, it, that, that you're supposed to do with your body. You're supposed to eat. And uh, we eat with the mouth, food goes out into the stomach, and then we digest and so forth and so on. So now, 
He says, but even that process, the day will come when that process will be no more. Now the body, now he speaks to the whole body, brother Lee, the whole human body. The body is not for, listen to this, the body is not for, it's not for fornication. Illicit sexual behavior, homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, sex before marriage, incest, bestiality, all these things. Said the body, the 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 uh, the uh, is ponia. The body is not for ponia, but look at this. For those who say uh, uh, you can do what you want to with your own body, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. A woman should have the right to do what she wants to do with her own body. Hey, ladies, your body is for the Lord. And the Lord is for your body. And you want the Lord to be for your body. The Lord will heal your body. The Lord will bless your body. The Lord keeps your body. The Lord has given you your body. But your body wasn't given to you for you to do what you want with it. As my body wasn't given for me, for me to do what I want with it. Put what I want in it. Eat as much as I want. Eat whatever I want. Not give it proper rest. Not bathe it. Not take care of it. Take it and have sex with anything and anybody as often as I want. As often as I please. That is not why God gave me my body and it's not why God gave you yours. He says, look at this, look at this. And God have both raised up the Lord, that is God raised Jesus' body from the dead and will also raise, look at this, and will also raise us up us by his own power. That body, even when the body dies, the body still belongs to God and the Lord is going to raise the body from the dead. That's why you ought not to cremate your body, but that's another, that's another talk. Uh, and look at, look at this now. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. So much for, you can do what you want with your body. When you're born again, God claims ownership of your body. Your body becomes a member of the body of Christ. He says, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. Shall I take my body, now that I'm born again, and I am in Jesus, do I, I uh, give my body to a prostitute? No. I thought you should have the right to do what you want with your own body. No, sir. God says no. God, as a matter of fact, Paul uses strong language. He says, God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot, he's speaking now of physical, the physical sexual union, is one body. When you come together, you be Become one for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. That is, when they come together, they shall be one body. When the man and the woman come together, notice uh, everything fits right. But if it's if it's extramarital or or before marriage, whatever, it's wrong. But uh, I just had to throw that in there. Everything fits right because in that other st stuff, that lesbian homosexual stuff, things don't even fit. So now look at this. Look at this. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That is, we belong to God. We belong to God. And when our spirits connect with God, our spirits are housed in our bodies. The housing of our spirits belong to Christ. This is why he says, flee fornication, run from it. Every sin that a man doth is without. That is, it's outside the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you and you and which you have of God. And look at this. You are not your own. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. So, hey, I know that the preacher said, ladies, you can do what you want with your bodies, but who you gonna who you going to believe, Bryant or God? Bryant or Jesus? Bryant or Paul? I think I'm going along with Paul myself. I'm going along with Jesus Christ, going along with the word of God. Oh, my, my time is running out, but, but uh, uh, he even says things like, uh, 
talked about how women should decide what they want to do with their bodies versus a bunch of men in Washington, D.C., a bunch of people in Washington, D.C. But uh, I guess I guess he's forgotten that we do have three co-equal branches of government, three co-equal. The Supreme Court is one of three. That is the executive branch. There's a judicial branch and there's a legislative branch, which oddly enough, the three co-equal branches of government in our country uh, mirrors what Isaiah <laughs> said about the God of the Bible. The prophet Isaiah said this in Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 22. He says, the Lord is our judge. There's a judicial branch. The Lord is our lawgiver. There's a legislative branch. And the Lord is our king. There's the executive branch. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. Uh, the legislative branch makes the laws. The executive branch enforces the laws. And the judicial branch uh, interprets the law. And the, the Supreme Court rightly interpreted that Roe v. Wade was founded on bad law. As I wrap this up, he said that. Uh, if America was pr truly pro-life, it would do more, you know, about the uh, head start and uh, helping babies. Now, in 2020, we spent over 10 million when it comes down to the cost of living adjustments, head start and uh, the base grants and all that over 10 billion dollars in 2022 over 10 billion dollars and we're projected to spend now the recommendations is over 12 billion dollars so i want to know how much money do we have to spend to prove that we're pro <laughs> a pro life and, and and let's be honest. Let, let, let's 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 be honest. Um, one has nothing to do with the other. Just because a person believes that a baby, a human being, should have the right to be born, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually signing up for, or the children should be born to a nation that provi provides everything that they will ever need from the womb to the tomb. If that be the case, I have a question for Pastor Bryant and others who think like he does and uh, 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 Maxine Waters and others. How did blacks make it in the 50s? How did we make it in the 40s? How did we make, make it uh, in the 30s, the 20s? Um, how did we make it uh, in years gone by. How did we survive slavery when we had none of these social safety nets? And yet, uh, you, you know, when we were really poor, so poor, we were poor, just poor, had nothing. And yet somehow, this race of people thrived and grew and survived. We beat slavery, we beat uh, uh, the Southern backlash. We, 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 we defeated Bull Connor. We beat Jim Crow. There's just so many things we defeated. Without any of all these, uh, these $12 billion, God made a way. And now all of this has to be in place before a lady who is, um, who is struggling or who is poor should give birth to her, her, her unborn child. Not to mention everybody knows I'm going, I'm, I'm going off. I know you, I've, I've run too long, but everybody knows who works in the saving unborn babies that the, the clinics aren't littered with poor people. Um, uh, I've seen some of the nicest Jaguars and Mercedes and Lexuses and, uh, 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 Mercedes and, oh, did I say Mercedes and uh, Cadillacs and just nice high end cars with the nicest Gucci bags. Oh, my designer, this designer, that nail so long that I could, where I could see them from where I was standing. The nicest extensions you ever seen in your life. And you know, these new, these new eyelashes that, that go out about, you know, a foot from the eyes, all of that. And going in there, you can afford all that. But you can't afford that baby. Something's wrong. But even with what goes on at the clinics, that a preacher would stand up in his pulpit 
on a Sunday morning and bemoan a law that was put in place. Uh, the late uh, uh, the justice said that Roe, we went too far. Who's the lady, uh, Brother Gary? Said we went too far with Roe. We went too far. Kinsburg, we, we thought that Roe was designed to get rid of two, two, uh, the people that we didn't want to have too many of. Talking about us. The thing was on shabby ground and it's overturned and now you got black preachers calling it an attack on women. Something is wrong with us. Now join me here tonight. Join me here tonight as I continue to speak God's truth with power and authority without apology. We don't lace these things with gossip. We don't lace these things with personal attacks. I have no personal attack to wage at Brother Bryant. I love him. But brother, you are wrong. And any man of God that stands in God's house and argues for the worship of Molech is in trouble with God. Meet me tonight right here for Bible study at the upper room, Church of God in Christ. I got I missed my drum roll for Bible study. <laughs> you got it? We're going to study the word of God together. I'm fired up, but I'll see you tonight. God bless you. Gary, let me go back to work now and let me finish my preparation, man. See y'all.